What's up everybody? Bill with the Honest Open Permaculture Hot Farm. It is April 25th, end of April. It's been a cool end of April, kind of weird. I want to show you what's going on in the gardens on all the garden plots that we have. I kind of explain what's been happening here at the end of April. We've been getting a cold snap come through and it's really been hurting a lot of the plants that I haven't been protecting, like really, really heavily protecting. So let's walk over here first to my wife's garden. We just really started this one this year and I want to show you what's going on over here. All right, so this is the wife's garden up here. You see up here in the front, she's got some zucchini plants. I put big rocks right behind the zucchini plants. So those big rocks could soak up the sunlight during the day and release the, the sunlight during the night. Or the sunlight, the heat during the night that it collected from the sunlight. And those buckets I will put over the plants at night so as the rocks are releasing the heat, it kind of traps the heat inside the bucket and helps keep those plants through it. So those are the best looking zucchini plants that we have right now in the ground because I went through so many measures on keeping them warm overnight. And it's getting them in the low 30s um, or in the upper 30s, zucchini plants and squash plants really don't like it. And then right behind that, she has a row of green beans that's just starting to pop. We've got three of them popping up right now. One here, one here, one here. And that's what's coming up, gonna be coming up. Oh, there's another one popping there. Right behind that, she has some herbs. I think some dill and something else, I don't remember. Along with um, some collards and some cabbage. And then back here in these pots, she's actually planted out apple seeds in these pots right here around her lettuce garden. So she found some, some sort of red apple she really liked and she tried planting those seeds and also some golden uh, delicious, I believe. Oh no, some Granny Smith, that's what it is. Also some Granny Smith. Uh, we know guys that you don't usually get true to form from seed, but why not try? We'll see, it'd be awesome. It'd be, if, if, if they take, it'd be a great tree to graft to. So we get that apple seed growing, we can get some cuttings from a Granny Smith and then graft that cutting from a Granny Smith onto the seed from a Granny Smith apple. And here's her lettuce. She's got three different types of lettuce in here. A romaine, a leafy lettuce, lettuce and then like a lettuce bib. Uh, and right in between the lettuce, you can just barely see them popping right now, is carrots. There's carrots popping right between the lettuce. Oh yeah, and a little red lettuce down there at the end too. And then she's got more plans back here for behind the garden, where that tarp is knocking out weeds. She's gonna put some cucumbers back there. She's gonna use this old bed frame right here um, for the trellises, the cucumbers. And then back here in these pots, she's got some elderberry plants going that are looking pretty good, actually. She's got elderberry here. There's another elderberry right there in that pot. Another one in the ground in between and another one here. She's gonna have herself a little elderberry patch right behind her garden. And we're gonna take these peas, actually, and we're gonna run them up her fence. This is to keep the rabbits and the chickens and the ducks out. I'm not expecting it to keep any deer out, but they usually don't run the side of this yard over here. Um, but the ducks, rabbits, and chickens sure do. All right, so that's up by the house. Let's go to the halfway garden, is what we're calling it, because it's halfway down the property. <laughs> but there's a compost pile behind us. Before we run away, let's show you some seed starts that we have been starting, and some that took in a hit. Um, we didn't pay attention, and we left them out one night, and they don't look good at all, look at this. This is some mistakes that you can make when you leave your seeds out and it gets too cold for them. I lost all these seeds here, most of them here, almost all of them here, maybe one or two made it, maybe three. But you can always start more, right? You can always start more. So you gotta be careful, you gotta know which plants can withstand the cold weather the chill in which plants can't. So here's one place we start, is right here on this table. 
And then we've got another spot over here. It's our makeshift greenhouse. Kaboom. Right here. And it is a top of a broken 10 by 10 frame, like pop-up tent, and a old greenhouse that we bought from Walmart, which the frame fell apart on it, and all we have is the plastic left. So we've been using that. We'll drape it over this and keep it nice and warm. But I'm working on hardening off the rest of these little plants here. So I've been opening it up, keeping it open overnight. Down there we've got some green bean starts that need to go on the ground here. We've got tomatoes, some green peppers, more tomatoes, some rosemary. These are starts in here, some squash, some cucumbers, some more tomatoes and some more peppers. Also some watermelons in the middle here. We've got some more peppers around the outside, tomatoes, green beans that have been potted up. Um, and we've got a couple bags of mulch in here which really helps radiate heat overnight. So that bag of mulch will suck up the sunlight, suck up the warmth during the day, and then we cover it and that'll help radiate heat overnight. Those plants made it, but there's some plants at the halfway garden that didn't make it. So let's go there and then we'll go to the back and I'll show you some other plants that didn't make it. So we're down here at the halfway garden as we dubbed it. Let's turn you around, show you what we got going on. It's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. The onions at the front are still standing up tall. They're getting thicker. The stalk is getting a lot thicker in there. They're pushing off new shoots. So the onions are looking good and then right behind it, there's turnips and radishes. We have them starting to form too, you see in there. We got some fruit. And then right behind the turnips and radishes, we've got a row of lettuce that goes all the way down. And then right behind the lettuce is where we had problems. See that green bean right there? We did have green beans like that about every six inches all the way down. We got one at the end. One about out about eight feet away from it. Then there's a few down here that did make it, like three or four down there. So we we replanted all the green beans in between the spots that didn't come up. So we just lost on a couple weeks. Not a, not a huge problem. We just lost a couple weeks on green beans. So right behind the green beans, we have a couple weeds popping up. But also we have a whole bunch of sugar snap peas, the snow peas. They're gonna start, they're almost reached the fence and they're gonna start growing up the fence and they'll be covering that fence with a whole lot of sugary sweet peas. Soon, I will come through and plant tomatoes on this back row so the tomatoes can run up this fence. I'm gonna do cherry tomatoes over here. We have some yellow pear cherry tomatoes, smaller tomatoes and then some um, some classic like red 100s or something like that. I forget what exactly what it's called. So we'll do a whole bunch of cherry tomatoes right here on this fence. All right, so let's take the walk back here to the back of the field and show you the rest. We got some company coming with us. You girls coming? All right, back here in what was gonna be the market garden, but now I don't think we're gonna be selling a whole lot of it. I think we're gonna be canning and using a lot of it for ourselves this year, not just for ourselves, but giving it a lot of away um, to people in need that need it. Um, I think we're going to, I know the shelves are stocked right now, um, but who knows here in the next few months. Well, we know a lot of farmers are having a big farmers, big ag is having to throw away a lot of stuff. Um, and that could really come down the pipeline and hurt a lot of people. Um, so I want to be in a position 
that I haven't promised people that have bought boxes, CSA boxes. I want to be in a position to give my stuff to the people that need it if that were to arise and not be committed to people that has paid me for the produce. Um, so there's that. So let's give you a walkthrough on what is growing on. You guys remember my carrot video, planting carrots in hay, kind of the Ruth Stout, my Ruth Stout adopted method. Well, it's doing okay. It's doing all right. We've got carrots all through here. A few weeds, it needs to be weeded. We've got a lot of carrots and a lot of weeds. <laughs> and right in between, see there's more, there's uh, more carrots on the other side here. Right in between these two carrot rows, um, I did have a big row of squash. It's zucchini squash and yellow neck squash that has gotten bit by the cold snap when coming through. You can see right there. That was a squash plant. So I had to go through and replant. That's okay, I just put another seed right beside it, right here. All the way down and up this row. So we lost this whole row of squash. I think actually we may have one or two Here's a zucchini right here that I think is gonna make it. And that one may make it. But the rest of them, I don't think they're gonna make it. I used the row covers over them and I had the pots in between them so the row covers weren't laying on top of the plants. And I put bricks and stuff in the pots and I was hoping those would warm up and keep it warm under there. But we lost them all. It wasn't enough protection for these plants back here. Um, so if we come down into the next row, you see I'm trying to use a lot of bricks too to warm up the soil. So the sun, I know it's a really rainy, nasty day today. It's not gonna do any good today. But on a sunny day, the bricks will warm up and help keep the soil warm. So here we had a whole row of green beans and every single one of them did not make it. Didn't have one make it at all. So I replanted all green beans. Here we have a few radishes and some beets down here at the end. And then the next row is looking quite well as this next row is actually um, cool like plants that like the cool. Here we have a beautiful row of radishes. We have a beautiful row of radishes. On the other side is another row of radishes. In the middle here, we have a couple different things. We have some kales, Swiss char, and spinach. So spinach is just on the edge right here, and then kale is in the middle, and then Swiss char on, on this edge. And then right down here, we have a whole bed of nothing but garlic. Right beside it's the same thing, garlic. As you can tell, we like garlic. And look at this over here. Anybody like broccoli? We sure do. Half of this bed is broccoli here. Some of it's looking really good right now. And then once we get down the other half, we've got cabbage. Last year was the first year I actually was able to grow cabbage heads. I've had terrible luck problems, bug problems with it in the past. And last year was the first year I actually conquered it with a lot of diatomaceous earth and row covers. When it's chilly like this, uh, the bugs that like to eat these cabbage plants are not out as prevalent. There is a few, there is a little bit of bug damage, but not heavy at all. So when the bugs that really like to eat these cabbage start to come out more, that's when we'll really cover it and lock it down with these row covers right here. We just gotta roll them down, cover it up so the bugs can't, it has a harder time for the bugs to get in there. And then we'll still use our DE which worked wonders last year for us. As you can look right here, here's some evidence of this plant getting eaten. 
So let's look around to see if we can find the culprit and see what it is. I do not see a culprit at all. So maybe see that kind of muddy waterness right there, watery right stuff right there. That's a DE pulled up in the in the rain. So maybe the DE killed whatever was eating it. Hopefully. So the next row right over, we've got some cauliflower and some collards, collard greens right up here. Collard greens are really starting to explode. Maybe a week and we're gonna have some really big collard greens. And then we have our lettuces. We've got red lettuce, a romaine lettuce, and then a leafy lettuce that will get a head in the middle. So you can harvest these leafy greens around the outside and then in the middle of this will start to form a head. So you kind of get a head lettuce along with a leafy lettuce. And I like to mix the leafy lettuce up with this red leafy lettuce over here and it makes a really good tossed salad and romaines. This is my wife's favorite right here. They're starting to form their nice little heads in the middle. And last year was one of the first years we got good heads of romaine lettuce also. And I figured out that it's also when you plant it. If you don't plant them early enough or if you're not planting them in seed starts and getting them started early enough, the heat is really gonna mess with anything that has to form a head. Down here we have some more cabbage, some stonehead cabbage. So these are the two rows that we are keeping under row covers. If we get really cold nights coming through, we'll co cover them down. But these plants also are cold loving plants or cool loving plants. They enjoy the cool. Over here, we go into onions around the outside of this bed and then some more brassicas like cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower in these two beds. Same thing, they're just uncovered and they have onions on the outside. So that was the cool weather crops. Well, most of them, we have a couple more over here I wanna show you real quick. Up these fences, we have more peas like I showed you in the halfway garden. We have more peas started at the bottom of these three fences right here. Look at those choke cherries. And the choke cherries are actually getting flowers on them this year. We may actually get a little bit of uh, Aronia berry, AKA choke cherry, this year. That's exciting. Hopefully the birds don't get them. I might need to net them up because we had a few more over here. Here's a few blueberry bushes and we're kind of standing in the middle of a newly planted strawberry patch that I just put in this year. If you missed that video, I'll drop that in the description and I'll drop an iCard in popping in right now. They haven't started growing yet. Hopefully they will, we'll see. All right, so along with the peas, as you can see, I'm digging holes right behind and that's where I'm gonna be dropping in tomato plants. And I've done most of this row right here. We've only got about four more holes to fill. We've dropped tomato plants in behind the peas and the tomatoes will climb up all the way to the top. And we've done the same thing on this row. We've got peas here in the front at the moment and tomatoes on the back. Now these tomatoes were about a foot and a half, maybe two foot tall, and now they're only eight inches out of the ground because I buried most of the stem. That's a good tip for you guys if you're planting tomatoes and they get tall. Bury the stem, the stem will root out and you'll get a stronger plant. In between these two rows of pea slash tomatoes, we have lettuce starting to pop. Most of this is a leafy lettuce. Down here is a lettuce bib. And then we also have some red lettuce that's harder to see down there at the end. In between these two rows, we have green beans. Now most of these green beans died off also during the cold snap. So I came through and replanted in between the green beans. So not bad, we'll get a staggered harvest now. 
which will probably work out pretty well. So to, a quick review on this side of the garden beds, we have strawberries, blueberries, aronia berries, aka choke cherry, depending on who you ask. And then right behind it, we've got peas interplanted with tomatoes. In between we have green beans, peas, tomatoes, lettuce, peas, tomatoes. We'll do something back here, we're not sure yet. Our potato patch and taters. And there, it's looking good. We've got five 50 foot rows of potatoes. I've hilled them up once already, so we're pretty much just gonna let them grow now. Let them explode. I may put a little bit more on this row here. On that row right there, we'll see. But the potato patch is looking really good. And as soon as the potatoes come out, we plant this out with corn and probably a running bean. Kind of a three sisters, corn, running bean, and maybe like a watermelons or something that'll run around or squashes. Boom, so that's everything we got planted right now. It's quite a bit. Um, I, like I said, I'd planned on selling a lot of this in a CSA, but now a lot of it we're going to can we're going to deep freeze and we're going to give away if needed. If we don't need to give it away, we're going to sell it to people that want local, fresh, organically grown produce. But if we get to a point to where we actually need to be feeding other people besides ourselves, I don't want me to be locked down, like I said, in a CSA when there's actually people that need it so if you watch this far in the video, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. Make sure you smash that thumbs up if you haven't. And I'll catch you on the next one. Later.